So since we're coming up to my birthday, I thought it would be the perfect time to make some more videos about fun drug experiences because April is kind of the month of drugs. I mean, obviously you've got 420, but you've also got Bicycle Day on the 19th of April. So I thought that April would be a really perfect month to talk about hallucinogenic experiences. And I want to start with ketamine. I think ketamine actually isn't classed as a hallucinogen. I think it's a disassociative, technically. Don't know, somebody fill me in, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I was like surfing blue light every day and error weird and trying to find all these things out. Um, I've been quite boring in recent years. But yeah, ketamine is the one I wanted to start with because out of all kind of hallucinogenic things, it's probably the one that I've, well, it's definitely the one I've used the most and I've never had a single bad time on it. It's always been the most friendly, just really peaceful hallucinogen. Every other hallucinogen I've experienced, it's been a case of like, yeah, you've everything has to be right. You have to be in a good mindset, all the set and setting stuff, have to be in a good mindset, has to be, you know, ideally like a beautiful clear night where there's sparkly stars and you can go for a walk. Either that or you want a really sunny day where the, like, the colours are really bright. Ketamine, it doesn't fucking matter because you're not going to be out in the world experiencing things. You're going to be in inner space experiencing things. All you need for ketamine is a comfortable beanbag or a comfortable bed to lie on, some nice chilled out music and a space where you feel safe. You definitely don't want to be k-holing in the middle of a busy party where you feel like somebody might come up and start drawing on your face or in a room where your parents are gonna barge in and try and make you do something like anything stressful like that. Basically you need to be able to leave your body and just leave it there, know that it's safe and go off in your mind because that's what's gonna happen if you're gonna be k-holing. I mean I have known some people who have in my opinion, horribly wasted every bit of ketamine they've ever done because they have only done ketamine in a non-K-hole situation in that they've been taking it and wandering around or going clubbing or just sitting watching movies and they've ended up building such a tolerance to ketamine that they can go through more than half a gram in a day, every day, which is just a horrible, horrible idea and they've never experienced a K-hole and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing with your ketamine? As far as I'm concerned, no, ketamine should not be used as a club drug. It will just create very embarrassing situations. You do not want to be that person at a party slithering across the floor, doing breaststroke across the floor, trying to climb into the refrigerator, generally being an embarrassing, drooling mess. You don't want to be doing that at a club and just forgetting what's going on and probably getting very nauseous and throwing up. Fuck that. As far as I'm concerned, ketamine should really only be used for amazing k-hole experiences because they are amazing so i guess to kind of summarize it i would always be doing it. every time i've done ketamine i think i've been in this room i never liked to do ketamine with anybody else it was always a solo thing because of the fact that you have to be totally happy leaving your body behind and me being an Asperger's person, I am not comfortable tripping with other people. Even people I know very, very well, I don't like it. So all this bollocks you get off, you know, total, total trip people with like, oh my god, no, you've got to be around like really good people, never trip on your own, it's going to be a downer. No, you don't know Asperger's people. Asperger's people are very frequently going to be happier tripping by themselves. When it comes to ketamine and safety though, yeah, I guess there is the possibility of choking on vomit, blah 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 blah. It probably is a good idea to have a trip sitter theoretically, but I never did. So I would set up my beanbag, I would have my black light glowing, my lava lamp glowing, um, some decent music on, and for me I would always listen to Trance Nation. Um, which is not my thing at all. I don't particularly like trance, I don't really listen to it, but it's so good for ketamine. It really is, it's just, it's perfect. It's perfectly like uplifting and a little bit clubby, but there's, and there's those lovely kind of synth bleepy sounds that paint colors and just orchestrate pictures in your mind. Um, and it's it's not dark and angry. Never listen to anything dark and angry on ketamine. That's, that's gonna be a bad idea. Um, and to be honest, more kind of um, like guitar based music, just not so good on ketamine. You do want something kind of dancey with interesting synthy sounds going on, so Trance Nation 
that's the way to go. And I would always, I'd set up two little bumps over on my makeup shelf there. Um, and you, you don't want much, like way smaller than your average line of coke. Just, just kind of a little bump, little bump, and then set up another little bump for later. Because trust me, if you crawl out of a K-hole and you want to top up a bit, your faculties are going to be fucked. Like even just getting up and crawling, you know, this far and then snorting another bump is is very difficult so you you want to tap out anything you're going to do first otherwise you're going to end up with it all over the carpet and it's going to be a nightmare so yeah i would do my first little bump and then i would smoke about half a joint and by the time i'd done that i would feel it starting to kick in and to begin with it's it's just kind of yeah like anesthetic i mean you know it's used as an anesthetic so i guess that makes sense but you get this sort of fuzzy fluffy feeling that's quite heavy um obviously you get the nasal drip which is about the one unpleasant thing about snorting it is that the drip down the back of your throat is quite unpleasant tasting some people have described it as being minty i don't think it's minty but it does have this cold sterile um yeah it's quite thick and it's quite ugh. it's not very nice so you do want to have a drink that has a flavor to kind of wash it away um and when it started getting really kind of like weighing me down i would have my music on and i would lie down on my bean bag and if you are going to be doing it alone and lying down definitely make sure you're slightly on your side just in case you do puke or whatever it's never happened to me ever I, you know even I didn't used to think about like should I not eat beforehand or anything I I never worried about that and I never threw up or anything so it's it's probably unlikely but just in case be on your side a little bit um <laughs> and then when it starts dragging you down um that's the point at which moving your body around becomes very strange and horrible there was one time that I you know I was just beginning to kind of seeg into the k-hole and my mum did knock on the door and called my name and I managed to get up I walked to the door I opened it a crack fortunately they just said that they were going somewhere I don't remember where but they were just like oh you know we're going off to blah blah see you at blah blah and I managed to say okay bye see you later and then I went and lay down and the minute I lay down I wasn't sure if I'd actually done that or not I was like did I imagine that think about that or did I actually do it but everything I'd seen while I was moving um it came in still frame so it was like it was like this jolting camera everything I'd seen and as I lay down the the kind of the jolting images eventually slowed and kind of became stable and I would always have this same mental image in my head it's it's really difficult to describe what being on ketamine is like but because it's so visual and so much of it flashes through your mind so quickly you can't describe it but to me it felt like I was this stone sinking kind of slowly down to the bottom of this riverbed and if I'd been moving and I'd just lain down there would be all this silt floating around in the water around me and that kind of represented like the nausea and the dizziness that I would feel if I was moving but the longer I lay still the more of this silt just kind of drifted to the bottom and eventually I was just this kind of warm little pebble lying at the bottom of the stream and um I would sometimes feel as though somebody had kind of grabbed me by my hair not in a painful way but just in a movement way and that they were dragging me along on my back kind of that way and that represented to me time passing that while I was on ketamine I was at the bottom of this lake I had dropped out of space and time and time was represented by this feeling of being dragged along that even though I was out of space and time I was still being dragged along by it but in general I was at the bottom of this warm riverbed and everything else was just flowing by and the real world was going on kind of in the air above me and I had nothing to do with it. I'd sunk down into this river where I could just completely contemplate. The body is essentially left behind. It is basically a huge out-of-body experience. You do have to just leave your body behind, detach from it, and you go off. And it is as if all of your brain has shut down and you feel... I would think a lot about death and like, okay, so which part of this experience would it be if I was dying? because I feel like all the main parts of my brain that are like who I am, what I'm doing today, my personality, my current life, all of that has shut down. 
and I am purely this this tiny atom of consciousness like drifting through the stratosphere and you would feel as though you were thinking with like the most primal basic kind of brainstem part that everything else had shut down and it does feel like being quite kind of close to what death must be like. It, it is weird, it, it's in a way like a lucid dream in that you know, or sometimes you do, it depends how far you go, sometimes you don't know that what you're seeing isn't real, sometimes it becomes fully real, but in general as you're first going into it you know, okay I've done ketamine, now I'm tripping, so it's like a lucid dream, but it is so incredibly real and you are so detached and bodiless that yeah, it's, it's just mind-blowing. So in the beginning when I was first dropping into the K-hole, the music would be very much orchestrating what I was seeing, that, you know, every beat would do something different and every synth sound would produce a different colour or a different image and so many images and scenes just shoot past you, literally every beat it changes and you can't, I mean I would love to have been able to just insert a camera into my brain for these things and, and capture everything that I saw and felt because it's so much of it is gone by the time you wake up, even if you were to journal everything like the minute you got up you can't because it's it's like a whole experience with every beat of the music is mad and there was this really repeated theme with me with falling for thousands of miles and my whole stomach would clench up as though I was on a roller coaster like dropping but what I would always see it was as if there was this wall strapped to my back and this wall it was too vast to comprehend it stretched out in thousands of miles in every direction it was a wall the size of a planet and I was somehow stuck to it, like my back would be stuck to it, and I would just be this kind of tiny human stuck to this enormous wall the size of a planet, and as I was stuck there with nothing but space in front of me and around me, just, just blackness and stars extending forever, and the wall would start to tilt forward, and then I would just start falling with this wall behind me and that's yeah when my stomach would just kind of go Ugh! and it would literally feel as though I was just dropping from space um that was quite common and that that yeah I guess that's one of the kind of things that really freaks people out maybe if they experience that and they're not ready for it it might freak them out but I always like even with these crazy things going on I felt completely like I know this is this is just an adventure this is just a roller coaster for my brain that's all it is like my body is lying down there it's perfectly safe it's perfectly warm i'll come back to it eventually but right now i'm just on a total space roller coaster and it's great um and then there were other things that i kept coming back to um on ketamine and one of them was this club i had these like i still wonder honestly whether anybody else has seen this identical club on ketamine because it felt like a memory every time I went there um it felt as though I had been there in real life multiple times and every time I would do ketamine at some point I would end up back in this club and I remember thinking this club is always here on ketamine it is it's it's this safe haven it's like literally a nightclub on the astral realm as if it exists on some other level and I had this feeling that like loads of people around the world were tripping on various drugs and particularly if they were doing ketamine maybe this club was only accessible to people on ketamine and they were all coming there and all the people I saw there maybe they were real astral bodies just like I was and it sounds bonkers but I always wondered this because the club felt so familiar every time I went there it felt like going to my regular nightclub it was like oh man I haven't been to this place in a while it's the ketamine club on some like astral dimension so for me this club it had a kind of low domed brick ceiling it was as though it was built underneath um a railway or something there was this low kind of yeah brick ceiling domed like this and I would see this long kind of avenue going down this this long tube and there would be people in front of me kind of with their hands uplifted dancing I couldn't see the DJ but you know people would just be going crazy and there was this amazing energy to the place and then off to the left there was a side room again with the same low domed ceiling 
and I would often see people I knew there um, but not real people, people from books and movies and things, I would see them there and I'd never get to talk to them, I'd just see them in the distance and then I'd be distracted by something else but it was always this kind of home port on ketamine, at some point I would always return to this place and be like oh this is like, this is where I feel really comfortable on ketamine, it was weird and then there were other things I saw that were more bizarre and one of them was the theme of evolution and it was expressed in the weirdest visuals that this would usually be when I was really really deep into a k-hole if I'd taken like a second bump later on and sunk really really deep this is the point at which I would feel like my brain was regressing to a point in prehistory. I'm really fascinated to know whether ketamine has any powers with like past lives and things because the things you see and experience are so weird. But yeah, evolution. I would have this repeated visual of being part way up a cliff and I could see the top of this cliff. There was like grass growing on the top and then it was this kind of harsh mud cliff where it was like it had broken away from the rest of the world and at the top of this cliff I would see this woman I don't know exactly what time in history I would label this woman as being maybe a thousand years or more ago she had long dark blonde hair some of it was plaited and she was wearing these very flowing garments it was like this this dress with kind of like wide bell sleeves tied at the waist with some kind of like I don't know leather looking belt she was the one who was on top of this cliff and she was trying to help other people up all I could see was her from kind of from this perspective and there were vines there were like plaited vines down this cliff edge and I was trying to climb up it and I think like other people were climbing up it too and she was kind of reaching out and trying to pull them up onto the top and it was almost impossible to climb up this vine I never reached the top I never actually got there to see her but for some reason to me it represented yeah the struggle of creatures to survive in like you know the early days of earth it was you know amoebas becoming creatures that crawled onto land and everything being so hard and impossible and yeah I don't know what that scene was to me why I kept seeing this same woman who she represented what she was but yeah, struggling up these vines, trying to reach this woman, I would see it so many times, it was really weird. And then one of the strangest and totally coolest experiences I had on ketamine was when I had a whole K-hole that was about going to Hogwarts and time got vastly distorted. I felt as though I had been in this K-hole for weeks, if not longer, that I guess you're K-holing for about 40 minutes to an hour maybe, like in the depths of it that's that's a complete guess but this one particular time nothing was different I was listening to the same music lying in the same place taking the same dose but for some reason it was incredibly immersive and I became convinced that it was real I even had a name I was this girl called Amy I she used to have a last name as well I can't remember what it was but her name was Amy and she was in the first year at Hogwarts so it wasn't just that I was suddenly at Hogwarts I was also aged 11 in my head and you know and I had friends there I made friends I got to go in the boats with Hagrid and go across the lake I got to choose my wand and everything and I was you know I wasn't very good at magic but I was learning and I was walking around the halls and going in the Gryffindor common room and it was so immersive that every part of my real life disappeared and I was, that was all there was, like that was my reality, I was actually at Hogwarts and I was there for weeks, I was there for weeks and weeks and weeks and it was amazing and then it started to drift away and I was like, no, what, hang on, this is, this is my life, this can't not be real with the, and at that point I did feel like I was going mad, not because I thought I was at Hogwarts but because I, I was beginning to doubt that I was at Hogwarts, that was what was mad to me, was that no this is my life I know who I am my name's Amy this is who I am and that you know and when I came out of that K-hole I was fucking devastated like who wouldn't be you know if you've spent weeks at Hogwarts and then you're like shit man I live in the real world and there is no Hogwarts dude that was really cool and from that trip I 
if I ever do lay hands on ketamine again and I ever do it again, which I really hope I will someday, um, I want to do it listening to movie soundtracks. I want to get a whole load of Harry Potter music or like Lord of the Rings music and K hold to that shit because I swear to you it will be amazing. Like, because yeah, the music, it does, it paints the scenery, it does everything. And, um, it would be so fucking cool. So anybody who does still do ketamine and has a fun time, I would love for you to just try that out for me and tell me how it goes. I mean, I would love to hear about other people's ketamine experiences anyway, because they do vary so wildly. And, and you know, like I have had people who are like, what? I've never experienced that. And I feel that my experiences are pretty typical of a K-hole experience. But where your brain goes at its most base level, I would love to know. Um, so I guess moving on to some more intense experiences I had with ketamine, because I did try injecting it as well. Um, I mostly injected it intravenously and I do not recommend that. If you want to actually K-hole and have a good time, don't fucking bother doing it um, intravenously. For starters, the rush you get with ketamine, it's not enjoyable. It's not like you'd get with coke or heroin where you do it and you're like fuck that's good um with ketamine it hits you like static white noise and you're just knocked out of consciousness and the the actual k-hole seems to last about 20 minutes no more so it's 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 a complete waste of time i only did it because i wanted to just knock myself out after shooting up cocaine for hours and hours which is something i will talk about um, in more detail at some point because it's a shit experience and I don't recommend it to anyone. To, to call it shit actually is an understatement. It is ungodly horrible and therefore I was like, hey, what the fuck do I have that's going to knock me out? Hey, ketamine, let's try that. Um, and it would knock me out. And there was one time, because I would find that I could shoot it up, run up my ladder to my bed, which is up there, lean off the end of the bed to turn the light off and then lie down and I would pass out. But one time I did this and I passed out at the wrong time and I came to somewhat later like this and I was dangling upside down from the end of my bed and if my hips had have slid about three inches forward I think I would have tumbled right off my bed and fallen however many like six feet or something um, and just landed on my head and broken my neck so that could have happened but it didn't I just woke up dangling and went oh okay i guess i'll go to bed um so yeah iv ketamine don't bother um but intramuscular ketamine where you just you know stab it anywhere in a fleshy area and inject it that that's pretty good it is like a really immersive ketamine experience it's basically not much different to snorting it except that you know you get more of the dose and you don't have the drip down the back of your throat which is great it's not you know you don't have that distraction but do not do intramuscular ketamine unless you literally have you know the pure stuff in a bottle and it's not dirty if you've got powder ketamine you shouldn't be injecting anything that's like a street drug and it's dirty don't put it in your muscle that's how you get an abscess I only did it maybe once or twice intramuscular, but the first time I did it that way, I made a vast kind of misjudgment in that for some reason I thought injecting something into the muscle would take about 10 minutes or more to kick in. So I thought, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an intramuscular shot, smoke a bit of weed, then I'm going to do an IV shot. So the IV shot will hit me, boom, I'm in a K-hole. Just as I start to rise up, the intramuscular shot will hit me and boom, I'll go back down again and I'll be K-holing for about two straight hours and it'll be great. Um, that's not how it works. Intramuscular shots actually kick in very, very quickly. So what happened was I did the intramuscular shot, I smoked a bit of weed, and already I was starting to feel it. And I was thinking, hmm, this is weird, but never mind, you know, I've made my plan now, so I'm going to go through with it. So I did the IV shot and, you know, flaked out pretty much instantly, but actually both shots hit me at the same time and that was the most intense K-hole I have ever experienced in my life. I was actually convinced that I was dead, um, not because I was scared, not because I consciously thought shit I've taken too much and I'm dead, although that can happen, you can overdose on ketamine and die, but no I wasn't afraid of it at all, um, it was just such an intense experience I thought this has to be death. 
of all the experiences I'd had going so far out into space and it would often have this feeling when I kind of emerged from a K-hole I would think oh my god I'm on I'm on the planet I am on earth like nothing can really be wrong with my life because I'm on the right planet because I had had this experience of being out in space and I had this huge terror of actually being out in space and like I still don't understand what would like induce someone to want to be an astronaut to be so completely fucked that they're not even on their home planet they're miles away from everyone they are out in space so whenever I would come back from a k-hole I'd be like I am on the right planet nothing is that wrong in my life because I'm on the right planet <laughs> a weird optimistic message but this this time that I'd combined the two shots I was so far out in space and everything got so so weird I was like this is clearly what death is like okay and after that experience I was completely the zen master like the next probably two or three days I was so zen um and this I guess like because I know ketamine is being studied now for use with depression and I think it will actually be good for people with depression particularly for people with anxiety actually because you come out of it and you are so chilled I would like every time I'd done a load of ketamine the next day I would take my dog and we'd go to like the local woods and we would just walk for ages and I'd just look at trees and like lie down on the grass and just stare at stuff and all these other dog walkers would be like what the fuck is wrong with you um but the only thing that is a problem with this zen master state you get with ketamine is that you can't stand stress you are so chilled that if anything tries to bring you out of that like your boss phones and goes I'm sorry you have to come into work you absolutely freak out you can't deal with it and it's not just me I remember having this conversation with another guy I knew who actually really really loved doing ketamine he was like you know it's the stress man I can't fucking deal with the stress after I've been doing ketamine but yeah I think it has interesting potential for for use with depression but um oh my god I've spoken for a very long time so I guess that's basically what ketamine was like for me and the only thing that I really hated with doing ketamine the only thing that really put me off doing it too frequently was coming out of the k-hole the you know while you're in it it's great it's completely immersive but then you have to come out of it and for about half an hour you're in this state where you're awake and alert kind of but your body is really fuzzy or a little bit nauseous and you can't do anything and at that point you want to have some trip toys I really do recommend having like a lava lamp and having some squishy glowy things to play with I remember one thing that really fascinated me was gravity that I had, had these balls and they looked like little anemones they were all kind of like spiky and fluffy and they had um colors that flashed in them and the one time I had them in my hands and I found that going boop, boop, like they would leave my hand and then fall back down again and that completely amazed me in this state I was like whoa I go Boop, and it flies off my hand and it comes back down again so I was just going Boop, 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 like just sitting there for about half an hour because it was it was so fascinating to me just the most basic things become really fascinating to you um and it is it's it's this amazing little experience that you can have without having to go anywhere without having to have a party or anything you can just have a beanbag and some trance and a line of ket and you can learn so much and experience so much and it's beautiful but yeah um some people do freak out some people do call it regretamine and absolutely hate it and um I guess I guess it's all personal but I guess you have to be knowing what's going to happen to you before it happens um, and I think a lot of people try ketamine for the first time thinking oh it's a club drug people do it at clubs it's just going to be like ecstasy I'm just going to feel happy and bubbly and maybe they do like a coke sized line do a great big line and then suddenly they can't move their body everything's going numb they everything's weird they can't understand how to speak to people and then they're sucked out into space and they probably assume like I did that they've died and some people might freak out knowing that so yeah I think any any drug you're ever gonna try do your fucking research first find out what you're likely to experience decide on that basis whether you want to do it or not don't just do it because like your friend Bob says it's cool like work out do I want to do this does this sound like something that is actually gonna benefit me I don't know and of course then there's the whole thing that we've learned recently that ketamine really really fucks up your bladder and if you do it too frequently you can end up incontinent or with really bad 
pain in your bladder and you might even have to have your bladder fucking removed or some shit. I don't know, but it's bad. So I'm quite glad that I never got into doing it like really heavily. I found it tiring enough in that kind of hallucinogenic way that I wouldn't want to binge on it like some people do. For me, it would usually be one dose or two doses in an evening. And then I would be like, yeah, my brain is kind of tired now. Like this is this is a lot of info to process. I, I'm i gonna lay off it for like a couple of weeks. Um, I did find it quite self-regulating, but anyway, I've taught for fucking forever, so if you've experienced this and you've had interesting, interesting events, you've gone to interesting places, then tell me. But yeah, I did find it fascinating with feeling as though most of my brain had shut down and thinking like, okay, what part of my brain am I thinking with? I feel like I'm right in the brainstem. I feel like I'm almost dead. This is almost what death is like. Like, it was fascinating. And uh, yeah, anytime I get the opportunity to have some fun again, I, I will do. It's very annoying when, you're, when your faithful dealer grows up and gets a sensible job and stops doing it anymore. <laughs> I think we've all experienced that and it sucks. But yeah, tell me your thoughts. And if you are celebrating Bicycle Day, have a good one. I hope you enjoy it. I'm kind of pondering it won't be bicycle day for me but maybe over the summer I might might have a little adventure I don't know it's been a long time and it might be fun so psyching myself up to it by reminiscing but anyway I'm gonna shut up now because I've talked forever so yeah bye bye <laughs>